Hi, this is Caleb Gedkin. Today I'll be giving you a list of 13 Bible verses about the Battle of Armageddon. Let's pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit and being Lord of our lives and Savior of our lives. Please show us what you want us to learn and apply it to our lives. If it's in your Holy Father, in your name we pray, amen. Let's get started. Number one, scream in terror for the day of the Lord has arrived. The time for the Almighty to destroy. Isaiah 13, 6. Number two, for see the day of the Lord is coming. The terrible day of his fury and fierce anger. The land will be made desolate and all the sinners destroyed with it. Isaiah 13, 9. Number 3. Let the nations be called to arms. Let them march to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I, the Lord, will sit to pronounce judgment on them all. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come tread the grapes, for the winepress is full. The storage vats are overflowing with the wickedness of these people. Thousands upon thousands are waiting in the valley of decision. There the day of the Lord will soon arrive. Joel three twelve through 14 Number 4. Watch for the day of the Lord. It's coming when your possessions will be plundered right in front of you. I will gather all the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken. The house is looted and the woman raped. Half the population will be taken into captivity and the rest will be left among the ruins of the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations, as he has fought in the in times past. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. East of Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives will split apart, making a wide valley running from east to west. Half the mountain will move toward the north and half toward the south. You will flee through this valley, for it will reach across to Azel. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the king days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all his holy ones with him. On that day, the sources of light will no longer shine, yet there will be continuous day. Only the Lord knows how this could happen. There will be no normal day and night, for at evening time it will still be light. On that day, life-giving waters will flow out from Jerusalem half toward the Dead Sea and half toward the Mediterranean, flowing, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. And the Lord will, will be king over all the earth. On that day there will be one Lord. His name alone will be worshipped. All the land from Geba, north of Judah, to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, will become one vast plain. But Jerusalem will be raised up in its original place and will be inhabited along the, all the way. From the Benjamin Gate over to the side of the Old Gate, then to the Corner Gate, and from the Tower of Hanel to the King's Wine Presses. And Jerusalem will be filled, safe at last, never again to be cursed and destroyed. And the Lord will send a plague on all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their people will become like walking corpses, their flesh rotting away, their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day they will be terrified, stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will fight their neighbors hand to hand. Judah too will be fighting at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the neighboring nations will be captured. Great quantities of gold and silver and fine clothing. The same plague will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the other animals in the enemy camps. In the end, the enemies of Jerusalem, who survived the plague, will go up to Jerusalem each year to worship the king the Lord of Heaven's armies, and to celebrate the festival of shelters. Any nation in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of Heaven's armies, will have no reign. If the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, the Lord will punish them with the same plague that he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. Egypt and the other nations will all be punished if they don't go to, the, to celebrate the festival of shelters. On that day, even the harness... Bells of the horses will be inscribed with these words, Holy to the Lord, and the cooking pots in the temple of the Lord will be as sacred as the basins used beside the altar. In fact, every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord of heaven's armies. All who come to worship will be free to use any of these pots to boil their sacrifices, and on that day they will no longer be traitors in the temple of the Lord of heaven's armies. Zechariah 14, 1-21 Number five, for there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Matthew twenty-four, twenty-one, and 22. 
Number six, and there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth. For the powers in heaven will be shaken. Luke 21, 25, and 26. Number seven, this truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. Titus 1, 2. Number eight, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Revelation 11, 15. Number nine. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels. Revelation 12, 9. Number 10. Then I saw a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was someone like the Son of Man. He had a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came from the temple and shouted to the one sitting on the cloud, Swing the sickle, for the time of harvest has come. The crop on earth is ripe. So the one sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the whole earth is harvested. After that, another angel came from the temple in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel, who had power to destroy with fire, came from the altar. He shouted to the angel with the sharp sickle, Swing your sickle now to gather the clusters of grapes from the vines of the earth for they are ripe for judgment. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and loaded the grapes into the great winepress of God's wrath. The grapes were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress in a stream about 180 miles long, and as high as a horse's brittle. Revelation 14, 14 through 20. Number 11. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for a battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God the Almighty. Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready, so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. And the demonic spirits gathered around all the rulers and their armies to a place with the Hebrew name Armageddon. Revelation sixteen fourteen through 16. Number 12. One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me and the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and blasphemes against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand she held a gold goblet full of obscenities and impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people, who are witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Why are you so amazed? The angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive but isn't now, and yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings had already fall, ha, fallen. The sixth now reigns, and the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. The scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, is the eighth king. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns of the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. They will all agree to give him their power and authority. Together they will go to war against the lamb, but the lamb will defeat them, because he is lord of all lords 
and king of all kings, and is called, and chosen and faithful ones will be with him. Then the angel said to me, The waters where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. The scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked, eat her flesh, and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out his purposes. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast. And so the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. Revelation 17 verses 1 through 18. Number 13. Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head bore many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God. The Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press on his robe at his thigh, was writ in this title, King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures, flying high in the sky, Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slaves, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world, and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast, and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse. And the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Revelation 19, 11 through 21. I hope these Bible verses were helpful and you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think, learned, or any questions you have down in the comment section below. Please be polite and respectful. Have a great day.